Hey everybody, this is John Siskovic from Farm Marketing Solutions, and I'm doing a video to show you how to export photos in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. This is the program I use to edit and organize all of my photos, and I have a ton more videos, or not a ton more, a couple more videos on how I edit the photos, how do I import them from the, you know, the SD card out of my camera and into my folder, and I explain everything in those videos as well. And this will cover what you do after you've done your editing, how do you export them so you can use them on your farm website or on your marketing materials and what specifically you should do when you're editing or when you're exporting. So one of the first things we're going to want to do, I took this picture a couple minutes ago, uh, some flowers outside my door. I've done a few quick edits. You can kind of see that um, here's like a before picture. You know, it kind of looks more like this. I've jazzed it up a little bit. Yeah, it looks a little prettier and I'm ready to put it online. Now, there's a few things to consider. If I'm going to put this online, like if it's going to go on Facebook or if it's going to go on my farm website, I'm going to want people to know where it's coming from. Uh, you know, if anybody shares that image or if it goes, you know, anywhere else on the web, I want people to know that it came from me, Food Cyclist Farm uh, or Farm Marketing Solutions. I do it for both because I have two kind of online places. So I'm going to go up to edit in the upper left hand corner, click on edit and then edit watermarks and a watermark just a little thing on the bottom of the picture. You can see it says copyright. I can put anything I want there. So I'm going to type in food cyclist farm. At the end, when I'm exporting all the photos, that'll automatically put that on all my photos, um, you know, however many I want to, and all in the same place. I can set up this preset. Once you set up the preset, you only have to do it once. And you can put that anywhere on the photograph. It doesn't matter where. I always put mine in the bottom left. You can change the opacity so people don't see the bright white lettering. Uh, I like to put it, you know, maybe around 50%. I don't want it to take away from how beautiful the picture is, but I also want it to be seen so that people, you know, people who are looking at the image want to see where it came from. They see Food Cyclist Farm. Uh, I actually put my website on there, usually foodcyclist.com. Uh, offset, you know, you can change. Uh, all this stuff. Oh, this is the shadow. If you want to make it three dimensional and put a shadow on it, uh, you can align it differently, make it bold, italic, so on and so forth. Change the font. Uh, I'm not going to do anything crazy. Uh, you can inset it a little vertically, horizontally, uh, if you don't want it pressed right against the side there. Uh, so we'll put it right there and just call that good. And normally I would just click saved. I have a bunch of presets on here already. Uh, you can see farm marketing solutions, um, foodcyclist.com are the ones I typically use. And then you would just click save. And then your watermark is saved in the future for when you want to go to export. So why do we have to export something? So with these edits that I'm doing on uh, in Adobe Lightroom, the original image is saved. You're never corrupting the original image. Those edits aren't doing anything to the file. It's edits on top of the image that the edits are saved in Adobe Lightroom. And that's great because it's like saving the negative when you're taking a picture with a film camera and you always want to preserve that negative in case you want to use it in the future. And the other thing is it doesn't eat up a lot of hard drive space. It's actually way more efficient and it's better for your computer. But if you want to use that picture anywhere, you have to export it and kind of take that, those filters that are laying on top of it and push them into the photo. If you kind of use that as a visual so that your photo then becomes this one whole piece. And then we're going to want to do that with exporting. So when you export, you click on the picture that you want to export. If you want to export a whole bunch of them, you can highlight the whole, you know, the whole group of pictures. You've clicked on it, then you click export. Then a window pops up. And you can export it to hard drive or uh, somewhere else. Usually you're doing it to your hard drive. And we'll just go from the top and work our way down to the bottom. So I'm going to choose my export location to a specific folder. Uh, you can you know, your, my documents, my pictures, if you just want to do it there, you can export it right to your desktop. I always go to a specific folder to keep things organized. Uh, then you just choose the folder, a file will come up. You can choose whatever folder that you want to store them in. I have a million folders. Uh, you can then choose to put it into a subfolder. Like if you have a farm photos folder and you're exporting all pictures of flowers, you can write flowers, uh, and then it'll create a subfolder. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can do it subfolder by date. You go down to file naming. I always rename it. Renaming your files, especially if you're putting them up, 
putting them up on the internet on your farm website is really good for search engine optimization. You can see I have pastured poultry chicken tractor because I just did a blog post on foodcyclist.com, which is my farm website on my pastured poultry chicken tractors. And I wanted to be found in my local area for chicken tractors. So I put that as the alt, uh, as the file name for my specific photos. And if you click down, you can choose, you know, the date, the file name, um, you know, custom X of Y. So if you had 20 pictures, it would say one of 20, two of 20, three of 20, however you want to organize it. And I always leave the extensions in lowercase. For file settings, I export to JPEG, uh, which is good for, you know, the internet. Uh, if you're doing this type of photos, uh, color space, sRGB, these are all automatically set on there. That's the default. I've never touched those. Uh, because on my blog, this one's a really good one, image sizing. My blog is uh, about 600 pixels wide. So I use my long edge, which is typically the top edge. You know, if it was standing straight up, the long edge would be on the side. But because it's on its side, the long edge is the top. The long edge is 600 pixels wide with a resolution of 72. 72 is the resolution that you're going to want to use on the internet. Uh, 72 pixels is approximately one inch on most screens uh, and that's the best resolution for quick load times on the internet if you have 300 for a resolution that's excellent for printing and that's something you should do for printing uh, but if you're putting them up online i have a resolution of 72 and because my blog is 600 pixels wide i choose long edge 600 pixels wide you don't have to resize it and you can pick just the resolution but i always resize to fit when i'm going online and you can change the width and the height, the dimensions, long edge, short edge, and how many megapixels. Uh, or, you know, and you can click don't enlarge if it's a small photo and it's, you know, it's long edge is shorter than 600 normally. Like if it's 400, you can click don't enlarge to not enlarge it to 600 because that might pixelate it a little bit. It's better to go from a lot to a little than from a little to a lot, uh, if that makes sense to you. Output sharpening. This is also really good. If you're printing, you can choose matte or glossy paper and that'll really optimize it for those two mediums because I put everything online. I always click on screen and I'm out standard. Standard seems pretty good to me. Screen will be the best resolution, the rest sharpening for putting things on the internet and metadata. I never do anything with that. I leave it, you know, just what it is, which is unclicked and watermarking. Those watermarks that we created before, I have foodcyclist.com. That's on there. After export, you can either do nothing, show an explorer, show, open in Photoshop, to open another thing. I always do nothing because I know where it goes. And then you finally click export and your file is exported. So let's actually export this photo and I'll show you. Specific folder, we'll go, we'll export it to the desktop and put it into a subfolder, flower take a look at my desktop I hope there's nothing chancy on there export it and you'll see on the top it's gonna go whoop all set and when it's not there anymore it's done we'll just minimize that minimize the other project I was working on click on the folder that says flower and there we go we'll open up this picture and you can see I'm 600 pixels wide and down on the bottom, it says foodcyclist.com. It's subtle, so it doesn't take away from the photo. But if anybody tried to use this photo, I can see really easy foodcyclist.com. And because, uh, but it has, you know, name of my farm, it's exported, uh, has all my, you know, edits on it and it's ready for the internet. It's been optimized. So I try to be very detailed with this tutorial to give you all the stuff. I've gotten to the point where, you know, a few clicks and I'm, I'm done. I'll go through, edit all my photos that I need um, and put them all into a folder. You can see when I have a blog post, we'll just open like a, an example blog post folder. Yeah, here's a good one for chickens. I did all my edits on these for chickens. You know, like this one, added a little, you know, took some of the color out of it, made it a little more uh, kind of dingy and nice. And I would just highlight all of these and then click on export. Oh, I had moved the files. Um, but yeah, click on all of them, hit export, and then you're good to go. And had I not moved the files, that would have been 
just easy peasy. But this is especially great. You can see on most of them, they're, you know, they have that long edge there. I just export them all the same size for my blog. They all have the watermark on them and uh, they're all good to, good to go for my online marketing. So I hope this helps along with the other videos on how to edit photos with Lightroom and how to import your photos from your camera once you've taken them. If you want more information, more advice on how to take better photos, what to think about when you're taking photos and how to use Lightroom more in depth, you can go to farmmarketingsolutions.com forward slash farm dash photos. And I'll have information on where to find Adobe uh, Lightroom and everything else on there. I mean, there's a ton of information. I give it away all for free uh, just in the hopes that it helps you take better photos and market your farm.